Hello everyone and welcome back to Insights at Dee Dee Lynn Designs. This is Dee Dee Lynn and I wanted to share with you how I clean the oxidation off my jewelry after I've soaked it in liver of sulfur. And for any of you that have watched my videos, I'm a stickler for, you know, meaning that I, I like everything done really, really well to the best of my ability. So I thought I'd show you after you've oxidized your jewelry, my cleaning process. So I've taken this out of the loaf and I've soaked it in a baking soda and Dawn solution for about 20 minutes. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get my Dawn soap. And I am going to start massaging this soap into my jewelry. And this is a uh, copper chain. And I'm going to keep doing this. And then I'm going to rinse. And um, I'm going to do this until all the black is gone. So I have nothing left on my gloves. And when you're working around your weaving areas or identical, excuse me, gentle, you know, fine areas, you just want to be more mindful about how you're massaging or the direction that you're massaging in, especially, you know, if it's a very delicate part of your design, you certainly don't want to uh, change that or deform its shape. So all I'm doing here is I am just massaging this Dawn soap into my piece and I'm trying to get every little nook and cranny that I can and then in a minute here I'm going to rinse it off and I'm going to do it again and then I'm going to show you the tools that I use that have really helped uh, you know accelerate my journey in the ancient art of wire and have helped me so much cleaning so I'm going to now rinse and I'm just going to go ahead and rinse this all off my jewelry. Run my hands through my chain. You can't really see this right now, but you know what I'm doing because I don't want to move my camera while I've got my hands wet. So you can see some shiny areas that are starting to come up. So now I'm going to do this again. And I'm very generous with my soap because I really want it to soak in these areas. And another thing you can do is if you wanted, you could just let this sit in a really thick Dawn soap solution for half an hour if you wanted. I've heard of some people using Simple Green because it's a degreaser. Haven't tried it, but notice how I'm just rolling everything, uh, especially the, if there's jump rings in my chain. I'm just kind of rolling it in my fingers and I'm still getting black as you can see and I haven't even started the scrubbing process so I'm gonna get a little more soap and I'm just gonna keep massaging in I take a long time to clean my jewelry because I want it to um, really, uh oh, I got hooked up here. I'm going to have to figure that out in a minute. Wow. I don't know what happened here. Oh, there we go. And um, normally I would take my chain off, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I just wanted to show you my process. So I'm going to rinse it off again. Just running my hands through my chain. And my glove, uh, or my telltale. So the next thing I'm going to do, and you might want to get one of these, this is a fine bristle brass brush. I got it on Amazon, and it is just a time saver, and the bristles are so fine, they just get in areas that you can't get in, in my opinion, with a toothbrush. And I, I'm gonna probably need to replace this pretty soon because the bristles are rending on the side. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add some more soap. And I'm gonna start uh, scrubbing my piece. And I'm just gonna keep doing this. And I do a section at a time. And then I'm going to turn it over 
so that I'm evenly cleaning it on both sides. And you can see that copper starting to come through. Now I used a 12 gauge half round on this to create my frame. So anytime you're using half round, it's gonna polish up really, really easily. You're gonna be able to get the oxidation off of that super quick. It's your round and square wires and your weaving that take a little longer to bring up and get the rest of that oxidation that you did with your liver of sulfur off. Now, depending on the highlights and lowlights that you want, you may want to stop in between and rinse off and so that you can see your working area and you know where you want more depth, meaning darkness, and where you wanna bring up more highlights. So I'm gonna do that in a minute, but I'm gonna continue with the back and the front and um, just continue taking my brass brush and cleaning my piece. Now I tend, if it's not a two-sided pendant, to leave my backs darker because I don't want to bring a lot of attention to the back. So that's really up to you. It's a personal choice. You know, it's just what I prefer. So now, as you notice, that there's very little black left. So um, cleaning your copper is critical before you put it in a tumbler and, um, you know, making sure that it's as clean as you can get it. So here's what we have so far. So now I know that I want more highlights on my weaving area and down in here so that you can really see those details. And there's areas that I personally don't wanna bring out as much. And again, that's a personal choice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my wire brush. I'm gonna load it with soap again, and I'm gonna start working on specific areas. But I just wanted to share with you, because when I was starting out, Oh my gosh, I had no idea what I was doing, right? And I would watch, you know, just like we all do, every tutorial I could find to understand the techniques that are involved with cleaning our jewelry. Because to me, after you make a piece, that is the most critical component in a finished design, is cleaning it. And before I got a tumbler, um, I couldn't really get it as clean as I wanted to by hand. So um, a tumbler just really, really cleans up your piece. So I'm just, oops, I'm just scrubbing away. And then I'm going to stop. Make sure that you get inside of your bale as close as you can. And I'm going to go ahead and rinse. Now you can use a toothbrush or a buffer, uh, a drill. I have polishing discs that I might use to get in these areas. But if you don't have a drill, I wanted to show you how you can use the sanding buffer, which is a very light grit that I use in my tutorials a lot. And this is really great. And the reason why I don't use steel wool is because it catches on everything. So all I'm going to do is start brushing over the areas that I want to bring up highlights on. I'm going to get down in on this weaving here and just go in different directions to bring up, you know, the, the, the areas of your copper that you want to bring more detail and attention to. And I'm working on my coils here and my outside of my frame where I have weaving. I wanna bring that up. I don't wanna bring, for me, the inside up as much uh, because I like the contrast. So I'm just gonna gently go over that. And I get these buffers on Amazon. I buy them by the box. Because they're so light grip, they light grit, they just don't last that long. So I'm just kind of going over the edges and detailing what I want to bring out. And I'm going to come alongside my frame here where I have weaving and bring that out over my bale. 
And you see how these are coming up? Now, if you wanted your coil that's tucked away in here, you're gonna have to access that probably with the polishing disc with a drill. And especially down in here where I have these snake coils, I'm not gonna really be able to get in there with my buffer. You know, I can try, but it's, it's gonna be very limited. So it just depends on the piece that you're working on. And I'm gonna leave my back more dark because as I mentioned, I don't wanna bring a lot of attention to that because that's where all my framing is. And what's most important is the focal, the focal point of your design. So you can go ahead then at this point and just take your wire brush again, and you should not have any black. If you do, you want to continue scrubbing and cleaning. And in all honesty, this is the longest process to me of making our jewelry and really bringing it to the place that, you know, we perceive, you know, our vision of what we want it to look like. And it's amazing. This brass brush is the bomb to me. Now, my chain, and I can't show you this, I normally lay it down on a board. So this is a cutting board, and I can't move my, um, my camera or it'd fall in the sink, but what I would do is the same thing with my brass brush. I would just take it and hold it very firmly, and I would just start brushing over it. And you can start to see, as I'm doing this, the copper coming up. Do you see that? See the copper coming up in there? So it's really a personal choice. And then at this point, I would just go ahead and stick this in the tumbler once I'm satisfied with how my piece looks. Because the tumbler additionally is going to bring out more copper highlights. So this is a piece I just finished, which I call um, Atlantis, because I was thinking about the, the stories of Atlantis and what it must have been like for them and the jewelry that they must have made and how elaborate it would be for, you know, the royals. So anyways, that uh, every piece I do, I'm inspired by something. Something comes into my mind while I'm working on it and then I give it its name and identity. So I just wanted to share that all with you guys so that you could see my polishing process and I hope that you enjoyed that. Please give me your feedback, your thumbs up, subscribe, comment. And thank you so much, everybody, for being a part of this wonderful, fabulous, magical ancient art of wire. Have a wonderful, fabulous, magical day. Bye for now.